Hello and welcome to Let's Play Destroy Humans, the 2020 remake version. I'm your host still, and this time around we're playing Mission 15, which is technically Mission 14, but um, yeah, it's called Duck and Cover. It was in the original game, and every mission from beyond this point is going to be uh, from the original game because the last episode, you remember, we did the wrong stuff, and that was 13.5. So the mission that they added in, which has messed up a little bit with the numbering, I guess. I mean, this is episode 15, but it's mission 14. So uh, every mission will be one less, technically, according to the game, than the episode number. If that makes any sense, you don't really need to worry about it, just worry about the name, duck and cover. And uh, it looks like we're going to be doing some stuff with that atomic bomb that they mentioned on the nuke. But uh, before we do that, we've got a cutscene where we'll see General Armquist again. Unfortunately, we hate him. He's a villain. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. General Armquist, good of you to come. Thought you might be too busy running damage control out in California. Never too busy to watch the Air Force fall flat on its face, Jack. Corporal Patterson, let's show our guests what this bottle rocket can do. Vertical takeoff and landing! How do you like that? That's it? That's your ultimate weapon? Patterson! Get over there and tell Miguel Cuddy to get that bird in the air right this second, or he's gonna be testing go-karts for the next 20 years! Forty million dollars for that? All right. So novelty plane crashes. Higgs says Higgs says sabotage. Armquist says incompetence. You remember that we sabotaged it last time, the X-13. Neat. Well, Armquist is inspecting their primitive aeronautical contraption, which they have never be sabotaged. We'll crush their pitiful air defense forces and destroy Armquist once and for all. So you remember we sabotaged the X-13 last time in the wrong stuff and that's kind of like the mission, the missing link, uh, the mission link, really, um, that was not there in the original, I mean it wasn't really explained why the X-13 didn't work, I mean, to be quite honest it wouldn't do that much good anyway, I mean it's just a flying saucer, I don't think it has any weapons, also that guy was peeing again, that's kind of like a new idle animation I guess that they brought in for the game because I see that about three or four times in this let's play so I suppose that's interesting you know they include some new uh, animations and also I messed up here because there is a little bit of an issue as far as the cursor goes the cursor will lock on to things on its own kind of and you can switch it however I've forgotten and I would probably never remember how to do that so basically what I do is I try and I try and look for where the yellow cursor is because that's where your mental powers and stuff will actually be going um, and that time I misplaced it I was supposed to activate the the sort of button to get into the base itself uh, the button is pretty much near the gate I mean, it's out in inside but you know you can use your mental powers through the gate if you want to I'm going to do it for proper now, so, you know, I eventually got it, because they, they came out, they activated a bit still. Um, let's go ahead and hypnotise this uh, driver guy, and he's going to drive the nuke to the uh, air airfield for us. What a nice chap.
So, to sort of drive the point home, this is a mission based on escorting the atomic bomb or the nuclear bomb to the airfield. And it was the same in the original game except this time around uh, we are actually defending it from soldiers. Previously the soldiers wouldn't attack the nuclear bomb, however now they do. They're our main antagonist uh, in this mission. Aside from all the other obstacles that there are, there will be some obstacles further down the path and what I recommend that you do is you go and just go ahead and take the things out. Because, believe me, um, if this truck hits one of these cows that's coming up, it will be destroyed. And I think I do actually fail in this mission because I didn't, I decided to focus on these guys rather than the cows because it will just keep going. Um, it doesn't really pay attention. Whereas in the original game, if anything was in front of it, it would just stop, but... Oh god. There you go. Brilliant. So there you go, uh, take out the cows before... you just focus on the soldiers that are coming from the base, because honestly... they're just distracting. Right. So... He's easy done, of course, you know, there's the Zephyrmatic and that will chain lightning to the cows and make sure that they all blow up, so... Nice little way of doing that there. But, um... Yeah. Watch out for the soldiers as well, they will do damage to the vehicle. Uh, we need to just protect it. So a mission about escort... Mission... Based on escorting something. An escort mission, maybe. If my brain would work today. Um... So yes. Now, uh, one of the things that I would like to say is that in the next episode we are going to be moving on to a different area. You'll, you'll notice we've been in area 42 since mission number 12. Uh, which was whatever happened to Crypto 136. And honestly, area 42 is a big open area where it is easy to just get lost. There aren't really any landmarks here, I mean... The Majestic Base, the Army Base, the Airfield, that's it. Otherwise it's just a load of dirt tracks and a load of rocks and cacti and all that rubbish that you won't be able to tell from any other piece of cacti or rock or dirt track. And hunting for probes I will say, in this game they made it a little bit more difficult to hunt for probes, at least it feels that way, because sometimes when I followed the guide for the probes, uh, I'm going to take out some mines in a moment, there's also a rocket launcher guy up there, um, but when I was hunting for the probes in this area, I was following a guide, so I was just doing what the player on the screen was doing, uh, but I did notice that some of these were in pretty out of the way areas, and places you wouldn't think to look. So that's a bit of a, a thing. I mean it must be pretty hard to hunt for pros in this area anyway because there aren't any landmarks. You can't really tell where you've been before unless you have a really good memory. And you know the probes will not fear on Agami and give us some extra DNA. That was actually how I got uh, a bunch of DNA later on in the game which you'll see. Um, as of right now, I have maxed uh, this area. I, I found all the probes in this area by using the guide and in uh, the... not the next area, but the area after that that we'll be, we will be visiting. Uh, I've maxed out Santa Modesta, uh, Turnip Seed Farm as well. Rockwell... I managed to find about 20, 24 of the probes on my own in Rockwell. So that's going to be a bit annoying because when you've got a majority of the probes already found you will be, mo and you follow a video, you'll mostly just be retracing the steps you've already taken 24 times. And yeah, but, uh, but I do recommend watching those videos if you want to collect them all because looking for them yourself, you can do it. Not saying you shouldn't. But if you want to find all the probes and you don't want too much hassle you don't want to be looking around for hours. Um, I recommend just using the using the guide, using the videos. I'm sure there's maps as well on the uh, game packs and stuff like that. 
So yeah, a wide variety of resources for when you want to do all that collecting. Anyway, we, we, we reached the military base, we're still going to be defending this thing, um, but I'm not going to fail again. Uh, I don't fail again anyway. Just letting you know, in case you were waiting. <laughs> so. Uh, so what's my, what's my real verdict on this game so far? I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. There have been a couple of times where I've been pulling my hair out. A little bit. But that was kind of kind of to be expected. I mean, they did ramp up the difficulty a little bit for this game. It still does feel pretty easy um, overall. And I think if you're rushing through it rather than trying to do a let's play of it, it will be a lot smoother than I'm than I'm doing now. You won't really kind of notice these missions going by. I mean, I'm surprised they even got up to this point already. You know, so. Yeah, it's been a pretty smooth ride uh, the whole way, and I'm, and I'm happy with that. And when we get to the final episode, I'll probably make a video about all the critique I have about this game because there is a, some crit critique. I won't lie. Um, my voice is annoying. I know it. I stutter with things. Sorry, but um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna activate it. Bloody hell! Okay, here we are. Cutscene. There's a little cutscene there, it's just a tiny one. And now we have to defend the bomb again from the scientists that are trying to turn it off because... I mean... I'm guessing that you can disarm a nuclear bomb. I'm guessing you can. Um. Nuclear bombs, as far as I'm aware, are designed to explode when they hit something. They're not designed to explode after a certain time, I don't think. That's only really in movies, where it's got a certain time, you know. Like, at the, a dramatic climax, the baddie has put a bomb somewhere in the city, and we've got to go find it and go disarm it, because... Cliché. I mean, if an actual nuclear bomb was falling, there's not really much you can do about it other than trying to shoot it out of the sky, but even then, uh, the fallout from it would still affect people. So it's like, I suppose, um, you know, it's not as if we can get this up in the air ourselves. It would be cool if we could, I don't know, pick it up using the sauce and then drop it down. Maybe that would be an idea rather than get it to drive all the way here defending the bloody thing and then and then just setting on a timer but I guess this is kind of the safest way to do it either way um, so I mentioned that General Armquist is a villain he's a villain in this game and real in reality there's only two uh, villains in this game that's it I mean that is one of the critiques I have with this remake because with the original game it was the first one in the franchise and I can understand why they didn't do too much. I mean it was on the PS2. There's you know, but there's a lot more space for potential here. And I like what they've done with it, but I also have a little bit of critique as far as the content goes. I really wish there was more to this game than what is here. Because what is here is basically just Okay, it's the original, but it looks prettier. Or it runs smoother, or... And that's it. And I know people are fine with remasters and remakes and all that, but I do want to see a little bit more than was there originally when it comes to games like this. I mean, I think that's a fair expectation. Right, okay, that was a... Probably a reference to a film that I don't know. It's spoken of, speaking of vaguely British accent though. So maybe it's a film that I've seen. Or at least, uh, at least heard of. Um, but yeah, we pretty much finished this mission and then we're going to have a cutscene in a moment. Showing the explosion, which is going to be wicked cool. And incredibly destructive and uh, a sign that humanity is awful and evil and 
and cares nothing about its own species, but it's going to look wicked cool. So there's that. And there we go, the, the uh, nuclear bomb exploded and military flag factory explodes. I'm sure that's exactly what it was and not a nuclear bomb. Dear oh dear oh dear, they really are stretching it out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Quist, you want to explain to me why our troops are abandoning Area 42? They're not leaving, they're regrouping. Everything's under control. Really? So the airfield hasn't been destroyed by one of our own nukes? It's that commie spy from Santa Modesta. He got in somehow, messed with one of our experiments. Don't worry, I'll catch him. That's what you said in Santa Modesta. Frankly, General, I'm beginning to question your resolve. Oh, I'm resolved, all right. That explosion was meant to take me out. You're saying this communist spy has a personal vendetta against you? Maybe you don't get the mindset we're up against. No, no, General. I'm taking you very seriously. The President should hear this. Get back to Capital City. I don't take orders from you. In this matter, I speak for the President. You know that. Oh, majestic. Mission successful, 60% uh, complete this time, it doesn't matter, we can always go back and uh, do it separately. So yeah, that was Duck and Cover and it's the last mission in Area 42 and it looks like Armquist is running away but we will follow him, we will follow him because the, this game has a story and, and it links on to a, another mission. Anyway, uh, Yes. Something a little more personal. yes, we did want uh, an upgrade. Thank you, Pox. Uh, I'm not going to bother saying what I'm upgrading. I'm just going to buy upgrades because, you know, they actually help. Which is lovely. Either way, uh, that was an, a nicer mission, I think. Nice one to end off Area 42 on. And next time we will be in Santa Modesta, believe it or not, an area we've already visited. And then it will be, it's a wonderful Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously a, a parody of It's a Wonderful Life, I'm guessing. But anyway, thanks for watching today's video. I do hope you enjoyed uh, It's a Wonderful Armageddon next, as you can see. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next episode, back in Santa Modesto.